This is Juliana Renicar-Breeze, and this is part three of my interview with Rose and John Skelton Pearson. I call them the sexperts. <laughs> what do you call yourselves? Well, I found, I found the word on the internet anyway, uh, and they seem to use that word in India. I think um, I think you get the idea that we because we teach tantra, we're therefore we're all about sex. Well, tantra isn't only sex, is it? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> uh, well, but it well, does include it. But it yeah, I know. It, I, I, well, we all know that. <laughs> we all know that. Well, we'll come on to that in a minute. Now, sure. John, where were you up to in your life? I think I think we were up to some kind of non-dual realization that I got back in 1983 when sitting on the banks of the river Ouse, Gillian. Juliana. Juliana. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. And what ha what was the realization? What happened? Um, I don't know. I don't really have words for it, but it it, it sent me quite it, some people they have these like really blinding revelations, you know, you you're suddenly hit by a thunderbolt and something like amazing happens and you have these visions and me, I, I sat on the banks of a river and I sat there and this all went on for about like five or six weeks. It was very slow. It was like very slowly. It's like very slowly getting drunk or very slowly getting drunk. Well, or were you on your own? Yeah, I was on my own. And um, I... What happened? I don't really... Well, yeah, that's right. I, I quit my, um, my student um, as an occupational therapist and then I... I was living in like what was essentially a converted cattle barn. Um, it, it, it was more a bungalow by that time, but it, it was pretty kind of cold and drafty. Uh, oh yeah, I told you about that. I told you that I started practicing yoga about then. But uh, what I think I omitted was the fact that the, the, res the residual experience or the, the end, the tail end of, of my experience of non-duality was that it, it kind of sent me psychotic. I started seeing auras around everybody. I started feeling energy fields. I started knowing what people were thinking. I was freaking people out. I was freaking myself out. But it's one of those things where... Well, just... you became a bit psychic. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. What, just suddenly? Yeah, well, the thing is that, like I say, like this, this whole experience that I was having was not some blinding flash. It was something I went into very slowly. And so the idea that uh, I remember once sitting in a, on, on, on a settee, you know, this converted cattle barn, it was shared by with myself and a couple, another couple. And um, um, the woman, Sylvia name was, she just passes me. And I said, uh, I've turned the emotion heater on so you can have a bath. And, and she went like, how did you know I was going to have a bath? And I'm like, oh, I thought you said you did. I just knew that she was going for a bath. And it completely freaked her out. And it, for me, it was like the most natural thing in the world. Oh, yeah, I just knew that that was going to happen. And there, lots and lots and lots. That, that's something that I can remember offhand, but lots of things like that. Uh, I was talking to trees. I got arrested for sitting under a tree once. Uh, wow. <laughs> how, how can that be illegal? Well, apparently, I mean, at the time, I mean, I was dressed like a hippie, you know, I, I ended up, we, we're going on about six months now, and next door to the converted cattle barn, there was a, like a commune, like a hippie anarcho punk commune, yeah. and I joined that, and I went to live there. Uh, uh, when where, where you mentioned the River Ouse, can you, where is it? Well, the, the, this is the River Ouse that flows through York. Oh, York, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Was I, I, Why yeah. were you arrested? What had well, you done? I um I I the thing is that, that we, we lived near Nether Poppleton, which was a little village outside York and it's a very kind of genteel community. Uh -huh. And I was known there because I used to go along to some of the yoga classes there, so some of the women there knew me, you know. They're all extremely well to do, and then there's us, hippies, hair halfway down our backs, you know, wearing Indian import clothes and yeah, yeah. meditating and you but know, you were wearing clothes. I was wearing clothes, yeah. <laughs> but there was a school quite close, another Poppleton school, and then a few trees. And I went out for this walk, and I was completely like, you know, in, in, entranced by the beauty of it all. There was little cops of Were you on drugs? Trees. No, not at all. Um, and I'd tell you if I was, but I, I really wasn't. Yeah, know, this, yeah. this was a natural high. Okay. It was amazing. I was meditating quite a lot by that time as well. And, yeah. Um, 
Anyway, I went to sit in this in this little copse of wood, and I had my back to a tree. Uh-huh. And uh, directly in front of me, there's there's a road, and beyond the road, there's a children's playground. So oh. I'm sat there looking at these. Clothes, oh, they thought smiling. you were beautiful. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, beautiful, you know, beautiful trees, beautiful children, uh-huh, absolutely uh-huh. innocent yes. thing, you know, the miracle of life. Yeah. Their souls are growing into their skin. All this kind of stuff's going on. The policeman came and grabbed me and said, what are you doing? I'm like, sat under a tree. <laughs> and you're sat under a tree and you're looking at young people. Oh. So, yeah, well, I am. Aren't they beautiful? You know, and, and then, of course, like, you know, he takes that the wrong way and hauls me into the police station. Huh? Um, so I was in the police station for like four hours. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't even speak to any of the children. No, I didn't speak to any of the children, no. no. I mean, I would have done, yeah. I would have gone in a playground and played with them, but, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so then what happened? Oh, I've had many strange experiences. I stayed in this commune for about four years. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I read. I, I was practicing Western magic. There was an occultist who lived there, and now a very well-known occultist, who's written many books, and a Tai Chi teacher. And then I was like doing a lot of yoga and meditation. So you know, we we were kind of. It was a rich and fertile ground for learning things. So I learned about magic. I did a lot of Wiccan stuff. I observed the festivals for a couple of years. I read everything that I could on yoga. Uh, Buddhism and Western psychology. I already got into all of that. And by 1990, I decided that the thing that I needed to do was to be of service to people. So I trained as a psychiatric nurse, mental health nurse uh, in Colchester, and I simultaneously trained as a yoga teacher. And then I was teaching yoga at uh, University of Essex, which was a gas. And I, then I had one or two private classes and um, they were very popular, so I got a reputation as a yoga teacher in Colchester for just a few years. Um, and then I kind of, I, you know, I moved to London and I, be, I joined a therapeutic community there to work as a nurse. And I did that because I was fed up of the kind of biomedical model. You know, I thought that nursing was going to be about, well, nursing helping people. I didn't realise that I was going to be a doctor's assistant and inject conventional psychotropic medicine into people who were diagnosed as being psychotic. And that's not what I got into the game for, you know. So I I managed to move to the other end of the spectrum. I I became, I started working as a, uh, with um, therapeutic specialisation which I was able to do off the back of the reputation I got for working a couple of years in London. Then I went up north and went to live in Hebden Bridge in 1996 um, and um, started to train as a psychotherapist at the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. Um, Within a year, I had a thriving practice there and one in Hebden Bridge uh, and I was teaching yoga. And then my son was born. Mm-hmm. The year after that. Mm-hmm. Um, so how many years ago was this? This is in 1997. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was 39. Right. And you married? Uh, I was married by that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I got married in 1988. Uh-huh. From um, someone in the commune? No, no. From somebody that I, I knew in York who was doing a degree in women's studies. So okay. she was goddess orientated, you know. Which is okay. It. Um, anyway, we split up. We we got divorced in two thousand, okay. which was the same year that I jacked in the nursing profession, became a full time psychotherapist. Okay. Um, and um, I worked mostly from Manchester, and I was also looking after my son an awful lot, and that was all very good. And I started uh, a systematic study of Buddhism. So at that time, so I did five years of Theravadan Buddhism. Um, I got trained um, in a Vipassana at Aravati Monastery in Hemel Hempstead. Um, And then I I did a lot of retreats. And then I went on to study uh, Tibetan Buddhism with Martin Vermas. I'm going to stop you there and we'll continue that in uh, part four. Thank you very much. You're welcome.